welcome to your new favorite band, the podcast brought to you by the LA Navy. And now, your hosts, Dallas Dwight and Drizzle Silvera. Well, hello, hello, and welcome to another episode of your new favorite band with the LA Maybe. We have a very special guest today. Before we get to him, I am Dallas Dwight. And I'm Drizzle Silvera. What's up? And our special guest today is Ethan Gibson. Wow. <laughs> I'm kidding. It's Gibbons. <laughs> Gibson, <laughs> bro. <laughs> Wait a yeah, are you like endorsed, man? <laughs> yeah, just for right out of the gate, just get your name wrong. Ethan and I have, um, how, long, how long have we known each other? I remember you from, from like high school. High school, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think you were probably a freshman and I was a sophomore when we first met. Because I remember we had a mutual friend. We, well, we had a mutual friend named Paul who Hill. introduced us. Yep. Paul introduced he, us? Yeah, he introduced us. He yeah. said, because he was like, hey, you got to meet this guy. He keeps wearing this Guns N' Roses t-shirt. Yeah. And I was really big in Iron Maiden. Still yeah. am. Yeah. And <laughs> and he he, he was just, and that was something that me and Paul connected on was just music. And he was like, you really got to meet this guy. So I met you right around that time. Dude, I've known Paul since first grade, I think. His dad was my gym teacher. Oh wow! In elementary school. Cool. And um, yeah, that's cool. I don't remember. I don't remember meeting you through Paul, but I do remember meeting you. And I remember we sat next to each other in chemistry class. Now you were a junior, and I was a sophomore, I think. Okay. For that, um, but we definitely had like a couple classes together. I remember that. Right. And right. That was super fun. And I kept, dude. I would. I was just always begging you to join my band, and you were always like, "Nah, dude." <laughs> what? <laughs> what band was that? I was probably live round at that time or something you know oh just, yeah i remember just me I just remember, like trying yeah. to start something up and i just could never find people to play with they wanted to play like rock everyone wanted to, everyone was doing the metal thing you know yeah quick and like you were one of the what class of 2010 yep Fuck yeah yeah yeah, dude. yeah you guys are like yep. i don't know kiss buddies or something way to call me out <laughs> on my age here but that's right you're 46 i think right 46 and i still hadn't um moved out of my mom's basement it's a good basement to be fair I mean, yeah, why leave a good basement, you know? It's not that good. It's, it's breaking <laughs> down. Internet keeps fucking up, mom. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you were an outlaw, I think. At that time, most yeah. likely, yep, because yeah. it was, um, I, I was an outlaw only for a little bit after I moved to Dutch Fork because it didn't last long after that. So, uh, See, I feel like it was an eternity. Because <laughs> I asked you, I swear, like every, day, every week for like two years. I think by the time I was a junior, I was an invader. I think that's Oh, that's true, that that's true, that's true, that's true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that was one of my most fun favorite bands to be yeah, a part of. Yeah. Especially at that time in my life when I was mm -hmm. like a piss and vinegar and just like I wanted to get out there and show every the whole world, you know, the insides of me. Yeah, gross. And in yeah. every way you could yeah. in every way you could imagine. And yeah. I, and for me and it that's was that's where uh you I don't know if you met Seth there, but you and Seth were both in that band together. Seth's another good I, friend of mine. I met Seth I think you're right. I think I met him in invader seth was seth was the drummer of invader at the time that i was in yeah. invader and then that's that leads on to the rest of the story between me and you right yeah so we um no i guess i started osara after another band i was in fell apart and i started a band called osara with my friend colton and um and then we were having member changes and stuff and ended up getting you and seth yep, yep. <laughs> so the 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 core lineup from what i remember of my days in osara was seth ethan dallas and colton Yep. And the four of us. And we went down and recorded with Rick uh, Beato, who's now an internet superstar. Oh, yeah. And, like, does tours and stuff. Ever since crazy. he met us, man, he's been great. He's been <laughs> on just... We the, must the have kid's we, been going up yeah, since he met us, we, for Yeah, sure. we must have given him that Midas touch or something. I know. Wouldn't even take a picture with us, though, man. Well, uh, yeah, he did. If you ever look at that picture on your desk, that's him. <laughs> you see the reflection in glasses or something. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, man, that was a crazy time. We had a fun time there. We've had a lot of... Uh, we were also in an Alice in Chains tribute together, you, me, and Seth. Yeah, some of the earliest touring experience I would have had. Same. Yeah. yeah, same. We played all over the country. We did the 30-hour drive home from El Paso, Texas. Yeah, it was rough. We uh, had to figure out how to get out of the line into Juarez, Mexico. Yeah, that was... <laughs> I remember that pretty clearly. I remember, thank God that neighborhood was there, dude. <laughs> no, I see, that was, not, that was not a thank God thing. That was like a holy crap. This is... We we're about to turn down the ugliest road to get yeah. out of this line before we end up in one of the ugliest cities. So. With a trailer and my RAV4. Wow. Yep. Yeah, and it was it, it was no telling where that road was going to lead, but we took it. Yeah, it, and we, we just had knew like that this this way was Juarez, Mexico, and then there was this option. So we were like this, whatever this is. Like <laughs> at the time we were in that line to go to Mexico, we had forty minutes to be on stage. Yeah. Oh shit. That was the yeah. Texas Tattoo Showdown. We played with uh, Drowning Pool, Deftones, 
Shifty, remember him? I remember Shifty. We played um, with. Uh, he's the guy that does. Uh, come, my lady, come, come. Okay, my yeah, lady. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, more tattoos than I've ever seen on a human being. They had that whole <laughs> hotel we stayed in. Yeah, like for, Hilton for, or something. For, for yeah. all the artists, so mm-hmm. we were all in that hotel partying yep. till the the sun came up. You were Seth. And I, I was were, actually Seth and I were up in the room watching Friends. I, I was, I'll never forget it. Yes, I was. I, I stayed <laughs> we fell up. Sleep early. I stayed up and I stayed up through the whole party. And, and to be honest, I was the last person in that lobby. I was like the last person awake and aware of the. And then I went to. And I was like, yeah. I, was, I, I, I outlasted all these guys. I That's toured. right. We did it. <laughs> That's right. I toured. Then we drove home. I can die happy now. 30 hours. It's The GPS said 24. El Paso, Texas. Texas is shaped like a gun. El Paso is the very tip of that gun. Far away from us. Home, right? So the GPS, we pulled it up. It said 24 hours. Ended up taking 30 with stops. I'll, we stopped at Cracker Barrel. Do you remember what happened at Cracker Barrel? Um... <laughs> You no, waited, but you can tell. You waited the entire meal for ketchup. Oh, and it never came, <laughs> and you just sat there with like a cold burger and fries, just like so sad. <laughs> you know, in my experience, <laughs> Dude, thr- so throughout funny. my throughout life, I've come to discover that that's going to happen all the time. Yeah. So I better just go ahead and eat the damn burger. Well, before you learned it gets that cold. lesson then, I guess, because <laughs> you were just sitting there like waiting, and like she'd come back and like fill up waters. You'd be like, "Could I get the ketchup?" Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. Like, yeah. Never came. One of the hardest things to cope with with being in a first world country, right? Not getting that ketchup, just getting that ketchup in a timely manner. Exactly, right. yeah, exactly. exactly. Or as we discovered, red sauce. You know, red sauce. Yeah, yeah, in the UK they call it red sauce, and like, dude, call it ketchup. Like we're not eight years old. That's a shout out to all my UK friends. <laughs> I'm, glad, I'm, gl- I'm glad. I'm glad you're. you're stupid. I'm glad you're getting rid of them so quickly. <laughs> yeah. he, he doesn't speak for both of us UK friends. <laughs> I love the UK. <laughs> Have you been to the UK? No, but I still love it. <laughs> okay, yeah, I just love the idea of the UK. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I'd never been either. I, I bangers I, and mash all the way. They, <laughs> I love both those things. I'm drinking a Gaelic ale here, so hey, nice. That's yeah, definitely UK. <laughs> There's nothing gay about that. I don't know what you're saying. <laughs> From Asheville, North Carolina. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm drinking a. Uh, what did you get me, Driz? I don't know. Some Seagram's spiked Seagram's or something. This some, is pretty yummy, though. Spike, yeah. Spiked green, crispy apple, as Ethan said. Yes. Crispy apple. And I'm, I'm drinking a uh, Gaelic as well. The same one, yeah. Thanks, uh, Ireland. <laughs> well, how do you liking it? It's, uh, it's pretty Gaelic and pretty Ailey, so. I was thinking the same. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's not bad for Asheville's first beer. It's not bad for Asheville's first beer. No, definitely not. It's, um. Shout out Asheville. It's right definitely on. really good. Uh, I've I've always liked these sponsor from the moment us. I had one. Yeah, <laughs> please. Which is town, just now. Yeah. The town council can sponsor. Uh, Kilikoy and LA podcast. maybe like a dual dual sponsorship yes. for the podcast. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you'd be on like you know, every week though, right? Like, sure. Like, you know, making beers is so is such a like a customary thing now for rock bands that we can yes. go ahead and get this going with them. You got the Iron Maiden one. I remember at um was that at Ripper's Rock House. Uh, I probably did if they were serving it. Yeah, someone else bought it for me because I ain't no way I could afford it. Really? Are they that expensive? Back then, for sure. I was, yeah. I was, I was broke as hell. Ain't no way I could afford it. Oh, very true. <laughs> it it was could have been it could have been a Bud Light. I would have been like, hey Dallas, Dallas. You remember that? You remember back in high school we were we were bros, right? <laughs> could you spot me this dollar fifty, please? <laughs> I need that dollar fifty. I'd really like this beer I'd if you really don't mind. Like to cash in on that dollar fifty. <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, we also lived together. We had the Osara house. We did, and that was a that good was time. you, me, and Seth. Yep, the big three. Yep. So you were you were in Osara as well for a period. I was of time, in Osara or? from the time that uh, it was 2013 ish. It was yeah. It was um, you were there after me a little bit as well. Right. I was in Osara from about 2013 ish, or from whenever Osara just started after we started, Noah. I think in 2012. After Noah left, yeah. I came in right right at right. that time, and then. But Seth was uh, already in, I think. Yes, Seth was already in, and I was in. I was in the band until about 2016, give or take uh, a day or two. Oh. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> give or take a day or two. So January first. <laughs> yeah, somewhere around there. <laughs> Trying to figure that one out. <laughs> yeah, you were. Yeah, you were there. I left in um, 2015, I think. Okay. Yeah, and then I moved up here. We had from we so we're had from, we're from Columbia or not from but that's where we all right, were hanging out right and we had brought in we've had like we had like two more member changes since I left and you were gone so right yeah Seth had left and we had like uh, we'd try to a, a drummer drummers, or two yeah. and then um, Lael was in the band since I was in the band yeah and so. he's still in I think correct I don't know um 
what Osar is doing these days, but uh, there I was a part of helping record their uh, latest album, I think, and they've maybe released a couple things since then, but the last full-length album I did all the vocal production for, so Colton and I did the vocals together. Right on, cool. So, <clears throat> obviously no Bad Blood still. You know, yeah, yeah, I don't imagine that ever happened. And maybe, yeah. maybe in the beginning that always happens when you sever a relationship in such yeah. a way, oh, but, you definitely. know, people are, people, are, people are okay enough with getting over it, and yeah. for the most part, People yeah. will understand that life takes you on different and just, paths. As Ethan says this, just a single tear, just slowly. <laughs> <laughs> I get emotional, man. It might happen here. <laughs> no, that's awesome. Yeah, we had some uh, some good times. I don't I don't know that I remember a ton of the Osara days because what sticks out in my head is more the grind stuff. Grind mm-hmm. was the name of the Allison Chains tribute we were a part of, and that's what took us um, across the country doing a lot of a lot of gigs and a lot of um, right. A lot of, uh, yeah, first touring experience, like you were saying. This is our, our first time packing up the car. and The car. Yeah, my car. The car, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that RAV4, man. Yeah, the, my little the, red the RAV4. small RAV4 yeah. with four dudes who had to live out of it and I hit t- the country. I totaled that RAV4 a couple years ago. Oh, no way. And I sent the guys a picture of it, and I said, how's your day going? <laughs> oh, man. <Yeah. laughs> it was just a totaled car. <laughs> Dude, we it was a Wednesday. We did it. We did a madhouse in that one or Mad Life. Mad Life. Yeah. Mad Life. We rented a little U-Haul. Went to Atlanta and played a gig. Now we have you know the passenger van and the trailer and all that. Right. It's probably a lot more comfortable than <laughs> yes. Than curling own, up with yeah. another body in the trunk in of the that back, car because we had yeah. we did have a trailer though. <laughs> yeah. we would rent U-Hauls and stuff. But yeah, we would lay down the seats and. Uh, lay out like blankets and pillows and stuff, and we'd have two up and two down. Yeah. Now, yeah. now, mind you. Not one of us could stretch out at all back no, there. No, so having fully. two people yeah. back there, you have to kind of curl very, sideways. You know, yeah. I yeah. mean, we, we paid our dues in one trip, pretty much. Yeah. At least you could stretch out in the Forerunner, right? Because we, bit, we, yeah. we did that. Still not. I don't think 100 percent full because you, you know an adult if human. If I can do it full, then you can. Were you at an angle though? I'm, I was tall. I'm tall. tall. Probably at an angle, maybe. Hardly. Because I remember, like, my head would be like on the back of the seat, and my feet would be like up against the thing pretty much i mean they touch the thing yeah yeah you know it's It's not a huge car no it's not definitely not but uh yeah no that 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 forerunner served a purpose for a little bit the guy in the very back's like in a different zip code (laughs) yeah of the van yeah 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 (laughs) dude so you know the 16 passenger vans right oh yeah yeah of course yeah yeah so that's what we've got. We got the 16 passenger. You got the two front yeah. seats, and then you've got the four rows of seats behind that. And in the very back, you can't even hear the conversations, let alone the music that they're playing in the yeah. car. Hardly. Yeah. So you're just like in another world back there. It's so tranquil. You know, like and shout. Yeah. I've got. I bought this air mattress. It's like a backpacking air mattress, but it's like four inches thick when you blow it up, and I'm able to like spread it out back there and just get like pretty good sleep on the road. Because you, you've obviously had to sleep in a car. Every like big bump, like wakes you up a little bit and then you fall back asleep and it kind of sucks yeah. especially if the sun's out that air mattress is like a cushion dude you just like boom <laughs> boom I like that ding. I really don't think I slept much at all I don't, I, I don't really sleep much at all when I'm touring no. I, yeah. whether I'm driving whether I'm an, the artist there's not much sleep for me when touring begins and for most people who who like who get excited for me like when i'm going out maybe with like an artist they like they really like and they get really excited for me because of course touring is something that everybody would everybody loves to it's do very and dreams of doing. Yeah. right 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 yeah but the truth of the matter is, is that it's i i know i know i'm not going to be i'm not going to sleep for two months and that's i'm going to have fun i'm going to have a lot of memories but i'm not going to sleep for two months and that's it's going to hurt it's going to yeah. hurt when i come back it's going to yeah. hurt my spine yeah yeah it's yeah. contorted in all these weird places yeah <laughs> Oh, for sure, man. Yeah. Oh, we should probably point out Ethan's a bass player. Did we say that? I mean, I, I left a context clue right behind him, right there on the wall. There oh, right on. Um, Stingray bass. Yeah. Right on. I haven't played bass in like eight years. For real? No. You're lying. Not for real. No. You play we bass have probably every, this morning. We have every instrument in our studio, so I do get to play around with yeah. everything. Nice. Which is fortunate, but I, the funny thing is, is that since I joined Kilikoi, I haven't played bass once. I play every instrument besides bass. Right. Which is, so, which is so funny to me because yeah. I was always a bass player. Right. That's funny to me too because, yeah, that's what always drew me to you is like you're an awesome bass player and then also as anyone can attest to ever seeing you live, your stage presence is just off the charts. <laughs> yeah. Which always, you know, <laughs> always drew me to you as well. 
Which you would probably be proud seeing the LA maybe these days because I just stole everything you do and just. <laughs> well, actually, I've seen I've seen some of your performance videos and I, I've, yeah. I've noted that you've come out of your shell quite yeah. a bit. I used to be very, very reserved, and you yeah. would be the one going nuts. Right and now, right. and now I was like, you know what? I think Ethan was right. Like, let's just. Well, you're having fun, and that's what's important. There, you know? Yeah, and yeah. I mean, you know, I, I'm glad you're having fun, and that's what's that's yeah. what's all about anyway. Yeah, the LA maybe. Uh, for me is the and i think for a lot of the guys in the band hopefully all the guys in the band it's the truest expression of like who we are right so it's easy you know i was doing pop punk i was doing osara which was a little heavier and i love that stuff but it was never the true like just gritty sleazy rock right not right no influences from metal at all just rock you know and that has always been the truest thing that that i really feel and like breathe and and it's just a natural thing for me. So it's easy for me to just be like, yeah, this is, you know, let's jump around. I've also, I think, just gotten better overall through years of, of practice and training and performing and stuff that now I, I know, like, okay, this is a part of the show that needs to be addressed. We can't just focus on playing. We have to focus on the other stuff, too. You know? Yeah, yeah. So, but you were just way ahead of me on that. <laughs> well, I, I was also, um, you know, I got to hold the bass, which I didn't have to hold the guitar and fill in for a three-piece band. Right. To, to make all the basically all the sound all the for noise. the band yeah yeah <laughs> yeah yeah so I, I was did, just a four piece we did the van right, thing we had right. the true front man no no guitar and then we had me on guitar and then you on bass and seth on drums there right was, there was no uh layering or thickening it was just like this is it like yeah <laughs> so i suppose i i kind of had the advantage as far as that goes right, for right true for having that freedom of movement that's a good point. But now you're in Killikoi, so that brings me to that. So Killikoi is obviously our new favorite band today. Cool. For this week. Mine too. We love Killikoi. I've loved, I've, I've loved and followed you guys for a while. And what, oh, yeah. what blew me away right off the bat when I heard you guys, when I, the first time I heard you, which I don't remember when that was, a few years ago maybe, was uh, just the production was incredible and Jordan's voice. Right off the bat, those two things. I was like, okay, like I, these guys have that sound that I'm familiar with and, this is, and, they, and they do it in a way that pulls me in like, okay, I'm, I'm in. Like, I'm ready for this. You Good. Know? I'm glad to hear that from you because so, I've always known, you know, you and I have had come up in music and our influences together through, through the years. So I'm glad it is uh, taking an effect on you in that manner. That's good. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. And uh, what do you guys tune to? You're not on seven strings, are you? Well, we have different. Yeah, we are, but we have different. We have different tunings. I know it's just low as fuck. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like A or something. Yeah, uh, it go. It'll go from like B to B to A. So just um, seven string. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then uh, some of them. I mean, we we do get to have fun. So anymore, we're doing a lot of more experimental things. Right. I don't even know what you consider experimental anymore when you have a twenty four string guitar and uh, yeah. everybody can record on it. So it's kind of hard to say what's experimental, but um, I mean, anybody who gets to sit down in a studio and just get to play around with today's technology can come up with anything. Some crazy stuff. Yeah. And that's, that's pretty much like, it's a no holds bar kind of thing. We, we, whatever we can come up with that we really like, we're yeah. going to, we're going to try it from this point on yeah. because we are a lot more self-involved than it was when it first started. Right. Like, like, uh, like DIY in that sense. Correct. Yeah. yeah. So, um, even, even to the point of music videos, I mean, we're, yeah. we're going, I mean, we've always, we've always been, a, we've always on our own merch too. So that's like the designs and all that. Well, we like have the designs and we, we also have um, our own merch shop. It's oh, part, it's cool. part of our studio. So, so literally printing it. Yeah. It's, it's all been in yeah. house and now we've expanded into, we, we, we all have our hands in, in, in something, but we, you know, we get into unreal engine. We'll get into uh, oh, the video stuff and, and who's doing know. that kind of work. Well, we like to, we like to all like experiment with it and explore. I would say Robbie has his hands in it more than anyone else at this point. That's like as far as Unreal Engine uh, goes. Yeah, I, I was about to say, for people that don't I, know listening, Unreal Engine is one of the softwares that programs like AAA video games. Right, correct. Like the top of the line. Any game you see and buy is probably either Unreal Engine or um, Unity. I think it's called Unity. Right, yeah. right. And, uh, and um, we also <laughs> we rent out our touring vehicles. So everything is like... Everything's yeah, kind of income like streams, yeah. Your, everything's yeah. income stream. So anything that we can do for ourselves, we can do for others. Yeah. So yeah. That's so it's business, yeah. And that's actually what uh, Pangea Productions is. Is it's kind of like the other side that we can offer to others, as opposed to Kilikoi working on itself. Right. So that is also all done with uh, throughout um, our studio complex that we're in. So yeah. Is that uh, well? Yeah, that's a theme. I think that anyone listening to this podcast has probably picked up on. 
um, from all the musicians we've talked to is like today the way to really do it is DIY. Oh yeah, yeah as for much sure. as you can. Yeah. Um, and that and with that comes learning a suite of skills that you didn't know had anything to do with being a musician. Right. For example, just today I learned so much about the South Carolina tax code that like <laughs> I had a meeting with our band accountant today and our manager and we were all in a meeting room together. And the accountant's taking me through all these things and I'm just drinking in all this tax knowledge and things to be compliant and things you got to think about so that, you know, if you do blow up down the road, they don't come back and bite you in the ass and you owe tens of thousands of dollars in, th in late fees and things. And you can't just say, I didn't know, you know, so like figuring out all this stuff and then turning around and learning about like uh, van repairs. I'm not a car guy at all, but I'm willing to learn like, you know, like we just changed the oil in it. And then, you know, now we have to replace some like parts and like doing all this stuff and like learning about vehicles and cars, which has never been, like I said, never been something that's interested me in the slightest. But you learn all these skills to help the band, you know? Learning Photoshop, learning web design, learning video design, all these podcasts. We built this whole place. We're literally drizzling in iron here, hammering and screwing in nails and stuff. Like, yeah. everything is, is, is DIY for the most part. We record all our own music, you know? We do well, so that's the much benefit. Stuff. I mean, you and I, we said it on the podcast before, we both run our own studio. This is the podcast studio, but right across the way, I've got my actual studio and yeah. mics and pre's and we've invested and I've been an engineer for well over a decade, big productions and yeah. broadcast mixes and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, yeah. And all uh, that experience, like, and comes I, went, together. I went to school for like visual communications and graphic design and I, I was doing like poster design for like five points pub and stuff back mm -hmm. in Columbia. And that got me free tickets to like St. Pat's, you know, just right. fun stuff like that. And, um, all that stuff just kind of comes together. You know, you learn these little skills along the way out of necessity. Like, Oh, oh yeah. we need a logo. And then you're like, okay, well we got to find someone who does a good logo. Oh, I like that logo. Let's contact this guy. Oh, he wants $1,500. Okay. Well, uh, let's go YouTube, like Photoshop tutorial. Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's so, it's so easy. It's so yeah. easy to be the one doing it yourself yeah. for like, uh, and then you have total control too, which is also kind of fun. Exactly. And then also when Kilikoy asks us to do a show and they say, Dallas, send us the logo. I don't have to go to Joe and be like, Hey, can I get the logo? They actually need it in black, not white or whatever. Yeah. You know, I can just do it. You're like, Hey, I need the black one. Okay. Here, have the black one. Have all of them. I don't care. I have all right. Of them. Like, right. <laughs> I made right. them all like take them all. You know, yeah, you don't have to go through another party. Like, you can do all this stuff. Right. Yeah, it's just direct, yeah. immediate. Yeah. And um, if you know anything about me, I'm all about efficiency and moving quickly. Like if you send me an email that needs a reply, like odds are you're getting a reply within less than 10 minutes. You know, like yeah. those kind of things, like, you know, things got to move fast. If you ask me for something that you need, I'm not going to be the, the one that holds up the train, you know, so you'll get your logo, <laughs> you know, that kind of stuff. Cause right. and we've, and we've built things in a way that allow me to do that. I don't have to go to someone else. We don't have to run it up the chain. We don't have to do all this stuff. That kind of leads us into being independent as well. You know, I don't know if you guys have a label or anything like that. No. Yeah. So we're fully independent as well. And we've... Not that we haven't been asked. Uh, right. Yeah. And sure. actually have had to decline, which... Yeah, same. Would I mean, it's, it's funny when you do, because you think about, you know, if, if a year ago... Right. A year ago, we declined. Where would we be a year ago today if we did not decline? And um, those kind of hypotheticals are you'll just get lost. Well, the good thing is that if you can keep the contact, then maybe you down the road, back. sure, yeah, you can work something else out, yeah. or maybe they'll work with you kind of more Never pro bono, bridges, or just you know, yeah. you know, however it may go. Yeah, pro boner. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, <laughs> but being being independent is, I think, at least for us, it's so important. Um, I feel like the last thing we need is is honestly more opinions. <laughs> That's the main thing. It's like, I don't want to have to answer to anyone right now. I'm usually the, the quiet one when it comes to like being really opinionated. Mm -hmm. Unless it's something like, I, I feel like, okay, I got to chime in. No, I think most of us are. But yeah. If, if we have, you know, if we don't, if I don't have an opinion on something, I'll usually just be like, yeah, whatever. Yep. <laughs> right. I don't have an opinion. You guys, you know, if someone does, like, let's hear it. But, True. <laughs> you know, and then when I do have an opinion, you'll know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you guys can both probably attest to that. 100%. So, Kilikoy. Back to, yeah, back to Kilikoy. That's me, Kilikoy. Oh, can, yeah. I, can I ask a question? I really got to yeah, ask yeah, go a ahead. question. Okay. If it's about the band name, I'm going to knock you out of the chair. It's about the band name. <laughs> ah, shit. So you better knock me out of the chair. <laughs> no, I'm never going to do that. You got to come over here first. I can't, All right. re I can't reach. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. Is it about like legit like killing a koi from a fucking koi pond? The name Kilikoy? The name Kilikoy, that yeah. is a... Uh, 
the credit's going to have to go to the three amigos, uh, Sam, Robbie, and Jordan, who will always tell you. It was influenced by the song Rumblefish by Seven Dust. Mm -hmm. And it's also part of um, the brand of a balance. The balance between good and evil, the balance between peace and uh, war, kill a koi. Because the old, the old Chinese symbol was the koi, right? Right. Yeah. So it is that it, it's kind of like uh, it's resembling that balance in the name. Okay, so here's what I thought in my head. Here's here's what I what I came up to the conclusion in my head. What the band and I knew I probably wrong. If this is but, a better story, you guys have to then tell this. But story here's the it. here's the story though. All right, so koi are are like protected fish. They're they're pretty like right like in the, in the what Japanese uh, Japanese, Japanese or, or yeah. Far East. I don't remember yeah, exactly far, specifically which somewhere one, over yeah. there. You know, um, they are like a protected fish they're they're honored they're they're sacred right and so like to me it was it was i was thinking in my head i was like oh yeah like tradition like 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 you know things traditions like that right. you respect like fucking kill it yeah <laughs> <laughs> well the, that's kind of cool though i like that <laughs> it's, it's not necessarily all it's also not necessarily kill a koi it's uh it's killer it's kind of like, like, like damn, slang. that's a dope koi. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, it's this slang. koi is a straight up killer. Yeah, but like, I guess like 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 yo, that's a killer koi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I guess you can pronounce it however you want because people sometimes pronounce our names, uh, Kakalaki or. <laughs> okay, well that's just, yeah. <laughs> that's just illiteracy. Is what uh, well, <laughs> the, illiteracy. one of the one of the one of the singers from one of the bands we were on tour with said if if you if you say your name is back if you say your name backwards it spells iokalic. Okay. And I just can't help but think that that's probably why it's Kilikoi. So that when I people see it backwards, they can say that. And uh, that's why <laughs> that's today thing. we're drinking Irish Gaelic Ale, because that is our Gaelic word of the day, Iokalic. Yeah. <laughs> it means just potato. fucking around, yeah. As most words in Gaelic do. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if he was poking fun at the name or if he really liked it, though. No, I'm not poking fun. Not no, you, no. not you, but the singer who made the comment about the backwards oh, pronunciation. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm fucking all this shit. I don't up. know. Yeah, we get the name thing all the time. You know, you we've get your name. We've we've been asked before, if uh, not by like a fan, but by like people we talk to, if we would consider changing our name. And the mm -hmm. the kind of reaction is just kind of like we all just look at each other like, uh, that's something we ever would really would want to do. Yeah. No, we we like our name. Oh, we, but also I don't like from a business perspective, it. that doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Like, like what do you want to that's change? Like start, that's like someone saying like, why don't you just start completely over? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure they want it to sound more like uh, every single other band. No, okay. Here's my theory on names. I could not disagree more with this person. Every name is stupid until it's not. Okay. You can come up with any Led Zeppelin. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> yeah, Zeppelin. But can't fly. we've heard it so many times that we don't think about it anymore. Guns and Roses. So dumb. Why yeah, is it maybe. And not and? Why is there an apostrophe? Guns and roses. Yeah, what? And, this, this sucks. and why would you have guns with roses? So dumb. guns are so cool. But we've heard it so many times that we just accept it without thinking. The the league of the the league of is the best <laughs> band name of all time. I will stand by that till I die. Okay, so so y'all y'all remember Doctor Acula? No. Yes. 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 Okay. okay we're coming right. back to the other league of though, but keep going. <laughs> okay. okay. All right. Go back to the. the no. League no. Finish of. your thing. Or was that it? No. That's it. Okay. Well, that was not a great anecdote. Speaking of Paul, by the way, see me after class. <laughs> I'm kidding. No, well, no, I got to take a sip. Maybe I need another beer too. I think I need our. Uh... Okay, so Daniel Kyer and I'm. <laughs> oh, podcast oh, we listeners. could talk about Daniel yeah, too. Po yeah, Ethan knew Daniel. Podcast listeners will know. Um, will know Daniel Kyer from from the song "When I'm Gone," uh, from us. And uh, we were uh, we came up with this idea for a joke metal band. It started with me listening to Metallica and thinking, like, you know what? I could probably sit down and in a few hours write an album of these riffs. <laughs> They're just like dun 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 that we had this spoof metal band that we had come up with. There was a lot of different, like, okay, this is a big story. Uh, you know, and it would, it, clearly there were patterns. Like, something would come up and be, you know, the darkness, the devils, the 
champions, whatever it was. And then there would be like the League of Darkness, the League of Devils. Like it would just take these different things to do it. And one that pops up is the the league of <laughs> <laughs> and that was the and one we just looked at that and we we're like that's the fucking name yeah right there the the league of i remember i thought it was a typo yeah everyone did <laughs> we had people uh constantly well we constantly we played two shows but uh for both of those shows posters had to be made for the first one i wish i wish i could have tracked this guy down he is a god because he he took his job like so seriously and he was such a good graphic designer. This poster was gorgeous. And not only that, but he made a logo for the, the league of that was one of the coolest logos I've ever seen. And it was properly done. Like it was a little the, and then the league of was big and he had like, like vines going through it. And dude, I was sitting here looking at it like, Oh my God, like that is incredible. <laughs> And then uh, I think both our shows we played with Invader though, right? I th- we did definitely play at least one, one. Yeah, we did at least definitely one, one of them. And you guys all wore the mask and the cloaks. We're going to get to that. <laughs> <laughs> There's a video on Facebook. We're going oh, to get to that. Oh, I'm going to have to go see that. Yeah. Uh, uh, Jimmy Boone. Seth's oh, dad. Oh, well, that, yeah. Seth's dad. I, it's I'll on his page. It. When if, it, you go, when it, if you go way back. When it's a memory, it'll yeah. come up. When it's a memory. That's pretty dope. When it's a memory, Someone dude. That, that's a add song, it title, song, song title. Song title. Song title. Song title. When it's a memory. Going list. Killikoi said it first. It. <laughs> Killikoi has intellectual property rights. You heard it here first. What was it, dude? Fuck when you. it's a memory. When it's a memory. Shit. When it's a memory. Fuck first one guys. to write a shitty song wins. Okay, so. <laughs> okay. So, The The League of. We I did, win. We did, <laughs> we did a full EP, and um, it was all just funny stuff. Like, it was all like... um. What was the one song? Oh, Super Satan. Uh, so Super Satan Metal was like the single. You know, there was no single, but just us having fun. I think I remember that song. Yeah, we recorded. It's cool riffs, though. There were some cool riffs in there. I'll have to show you some of them after this because I remember a couple of them. But uh, it was me, Daniel, uh, played drums. He's primarily a guitar player, but a really good drummer as well. So he played drums for that. Paul, the friend we were talking about earlier, he was the vocalist. Right. And then my friend Patrick from high school was the bass player. And so we decided, like, okay, we have to be so over the top and weird. So let's go get these, these you know, if you Google, like, the white mask, it's the one that comes up. Just the, that the white mask. <laughs> just the plain white mask. We got these black cloaks. Couldn't see anything except our hands and our feet. So we're like, what are we going to do for shoes? So we got these pink flip-flops from Walmart. <laughs> All the same exact pair of, like, pink flowery flip-flops. And we go to New Brooklyn Tavern, which is, like, where we came up playing gigs. It's like CBGB for anyone who doesn't know. Yeah. It's legendary. In Columbia. Yeah. South Carolina. <laughs> we should have mentioned that earlier. I said Columbia. We didn't say South Carolina. Uh, in the U.S. And uh, so we decided, like, well, we can't, like, load our amps and stuff and then go change. Everyone will know it's us. It was important to us that nobody knew who we were. And still, I think now nobody remembers. But at the time, like, nobody actually did know unless we were, like, friends with them or something. Because we showed up, drove up in costume. We loaded our amps onto the stage in costume. We refused to say one word to anyone. And we were just completely silent, like doing all of the setup and just these guys in these cloaks and masks and stuff. And then we played the show and people were like, whoa. And then we like <laughs> took our stuff off and went back in the car and like, you know, did the whole thing. Like nobody knew it was us. And uh, both those shows went pretty well. There's a video of it somewhere on, uh, on Jimmy's page, like I was saying. But that was a... Um, a pretty crazy memory. We played opening for you guys at one, one of them. I do remember the one. That was a good show. At least a lot of the one there. time. I remember Derek was not a big fan of me at the time. And um, I'll during never During the League of? Yeah. Uh, no, Der- Derek from... Uh, right, but yeah, dur- during that time of I the League of? in general. Yeah. I think we, you know, we patched it up later and we're friends or whatever. But I, I never was like close with him. But you know, we were friendly and stuff. But there was a time where I don't think he liked me very much. Where a lot of people didn't like me for a <laughs> period I, of my I, life. I fucking don't like you, man. <laughs> There you go. See, still. That's why, I'm, that's why it took you seven years to get me over here. <laughs> you know, we're only, what, 23 episodes in? Yeah. yeah. More than that. Right. You've been hitting me up every episode since number one. I know. I've never <laughs> liked me, so there you go. But I'll never forget, um, I think it was at, my friend Ashton was in the crowd, and he said Derek at one point to his friend, I guess Brandon, he turned and was like, dude, that guitar player is really good. <laughs> and Ashton was standing next to him and overheard it, and he told me after... I was like, hey, there we go. I got snuck a compliment out of Derek, and he didn't even like me. I'll well, take maybe, it. He did, maybe he did like you, and the only time he ever talked about you was a compliment. He just didn't waste any words. That's a good point. Why waste words on me? Why yeah, waste words on that, That's as much as he liked you. He, says, he said, why waste words on that guy? <laughs> <laughs> I can't say anything nice, so, <laughs> so I'm going to say nothing. Say nothing. <laughs> cool lick. But back to Killikoi. Here's my dumb fanboy question. And I have to ask it. And you know what I'm going to ask. What the fuck is that cage? 
What is the cage? What is this monstrosity? You guys need to look up Kilikoi and see this thing. It's insane. Spell, spell it for everybody. The cage? No, spell the name <laughs> so they can look it up. C A. No. It's, uh, it's actually with a K for marketing purposes. That's hilarious. K I and put a little trademark sign next to it. Right. K I L L A K O I. Right. Right. I was, also, I was literally about to say K O Koi. Also, we'll get back to the cage, but where can people follow you? Uh, you have a device in your pocket. Type Whoa. in the search bar what he just said, and everything that comes up, you can follow us on. And that is the benefit of having a good name. Which is yes. why I'd argue that Killicoy is a great Correct. name. I, I, I agree. I, yeah. Which yeah. is why the LA Maybe is a great name. Which is why Osara was a great name. Which is why I, I, I think was a great I think name. about Osara too yeah. when I think about yep. the uniqueness of the name. Yeah, that's okay. a, it's a big part. But you know what's funny? Even Killicoy has like a and uh, there's a lot of there's there's a YouTube channel. There's like a YouTube channel for Osara. Uh, for like under a whole different language and there's like a YouTube channel for Kilikoi under a whole different language. Well, Osara, you remember we kept having that one guy that would rep- would comment on every post we ever made. The, uh, the, I- the guy from Iceland. He was like, hello from Osara, Finland oh, or Iceland yeah, or Sweden I or wherever it was. From, I can't remember yeah. the country, but it was one of the Scandinavian countries, I think. Every post we make, hello from Osara, Finland, like or whatever, yeah. you know, and it was like, yeah. okay, we get it. Like, <laughs> We got it after the third one. Okay, but the cage. The, sorry, let me pronounce it correctly. The cage. So the cage is essentially, it's a, a multi-purpose instrument that basically plays, that, that I play, mm-hmm. that I play all the uh, sounds that don't come from the guitar, the bass, right. the drums, and the microphones. So it's a crazy looking keyboard. It's a crazy, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a cage looking keyboard. <laughs> it's, it's basically like a jungle gym. That yeah. I that I get to bang on and it makes you all have the like noises. Rolling pads and stuff it looks like around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, it's it's made out of heavy duty South African steel, and it weighs probably collectively five hundred pounds at least. And that is uh, a very fun instrument. I, I say when we first built it, it was basically like it was it was a Christmas toy that every kid who ever like wanted to be a musician wanted and didn't even know they wanted it. Like when I first got behind it, I was like, if this was given to me as a Christmas gift, as a kid, I would have been lost. This would have been it for me. There's like a, it seems like there's like a combination of like physicality to it as well. For sure. And that's important. It's not just like a guitar. Injure myself. (laughs) Yeah. I saw you like chained up in it at the last one. Yeah, I did. I was suspended by chains and I got a little bit of nerve damage from it. Okay, cool. But you know, it's all for your art, all for the content. Yeah, <laughs> do it for the, for the gram, <laughs> all for the gram. But uh, you know, it was that it, was cool though. Thank you. It was it, it was all intended to be you know part of a show. The cage in itself is supposed to be a spectacle, and I got to make the most out of it. It is even and the nerve damage that like was that, intended right? with that bass thing. What was that? I said even the nerve damage that was pretty intended. Well, it's it's, it's, it's at least expected. <laughs> okay, you know, you can't true. you can't that's expect true. to be suspended your whole body weight in chains and not have the tightening around very sensitive nerves in your arms and your yeah. wrists and your hands. Yeah. That sounds pretty shitty. Yeah. You guys I mean, gotta, pretty cool you gotta the see time. the pictures. The, uh, he's literally like Superman in this thing. Just hanging. It's really cool. I, the bruises that I sustained on my legs were actually pretty gnarly. Really? Yeah. Yeah. And that you was tested out before I assume. Well, see that was, bef- they were gnarly before the show because yeah, so it just got worse. Honestly, before the show happened, I don't know if I had a successful run. Right. Oh, yeah. So yeah. it's like a David Blaine shit. Like, right. We're just like, we'll see if this works. <laughs> in, in some ways, yes. And uh, it, it, it took a little bit of, uh, you know, you, you kind of, you, you got to kind of convince, you know, even the other guys in the band that, you know, we got to do this. You know, we can't, even if we do fail here, we got to do it at the show. Right. Like, you have to have a live run. Yeah. You, you have to do you it. You can't we, just rehearse. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We have to do this. Yeah. That's the fastest way to learn. So, yeah. So we eventually nailed it. And, you know, everybody felt more encouraged as we got closer to the show. And everybody was still really, you know, like, I don't know if they worried about my well-being or worried about successfully pulling off the stunt, but worried before it happened for sure. And I kept, you know, they kept asking me if I was okay, if I was good before, like, the curtain gets ripped or anything. But honestly, no. I mean, let's roll. That's whatever happens, happens. Let's roll. Yeah. You know, this is a show. And, you know, the fun thing is since I was a kid, uh, the fun thing I always wanted to witness at a show is whatever happens, it's going to happen here. It's going to happen right before my Which eyes. Which is why I think Guns got so big. Yeah. Is 
aside from the music, the, the, like, the it fighting, was the, it was the like nobody knowing knows what, what you're going to happen. happen. Like yeah. anything could happen on stage. They could play a great show, or they could play three songs, and Axel punches a photographer in the face and storms off, and the whole place riots and brings the whole stadium to the ground. <laughs> right. I don't know what I'm going to see, but we're going to see something. Like, <laughs> right? But that's just like nuts, man. But yeah. So uh, the cage is just um, a really fun thing. It's uh, it, it looks great. But we, it's basically have, just a bunch of sample pads. Yeah, and we yeah. have... Um, just trigger different things. We, and we get to... Uh, basically, we're, it, it, has, it has evolutions it's going to go through. Right. And it's going to take a lot of in, uh, engineering because the, uh, the, uh, the ideas for what we can do with it are basically come from, you know, it'd be really cool if we could build something that I could just do like this kind of thing over here and we can make all this kind of stuff happen just by like this one move or something. But of course, nothing like that exists. So we'd have to figure out how we're going to make something like that happen um, realistically. Yeah, I love the ingenuity and like the thoughtfulness that goes into building something like that. It would lead me to the question, like how, how, how important is the live show to you guys, which obviously seems very important. And how do you guys go about like creating these new ideas? That keep things fresh and interesting and, and, and unique? Uh, well, uh, going about it is different from, uh, I guess, spitting out the idea. Um, realistically, the cage is a bit difficult to tour with at the level we're at. So the only time we really get to use the big cage is when we are having our own show or right. we're the headliner. If we're touring and we're not the headliner, it's, it's really hard to have that kind of influence and pull on a touring package to say, hey, I need uh, eight square feet of space on this stage, on this side of the stage, with everybody's stuff stacked up. Well, one thing that is nice is that most, a lot of bands don't use amps these days. Yeah. They're getting more and more into the profiling system. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think we have quad cortexes even here. Yeah, we do. We're Not to fans. give spoilers away to we people did a whole who didn't know that. on the quad cortex, actually. But, um... Um, kind of getting sidetracked, but uh, yeah, space. Uh, but for the live show. So yeah, so 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 going about getting things happening is a bit difficult. We we actually did build uh, a miniature version of the cage that we do get to tour with, and basically it's it's still pretty big, and people do still like it just the same. But it it's not the same for me, and I think a lot of people who've seen both of them understand that. For the real one, yeah, right. And uh, but it's just it's just difficult with if you're not the headlining band. At, at the yeah, level you don't we're at, be that those douchebags that are like, well, you're not going to get here it. Here we go. Yeah, exactly. You're not going to get yeah. it. Yeah, I mean, even ask. You'd have to, like, you know, you'd have to set up on the floor, and then people are going to be like looking at you weird. I mean, you'd really have to impress them to, for them not to look at you like, look at this band yeah. set up on the floor. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but uh, you know, it's fun. I mean, most people, you know, like I said, they really enjoy it. They all think it's really cool. Uh, unfortunately, like I said, for touring purposes, there's a lot of people who uh, across the country who have seen us play and perform on the, on the smaller version, but have not gotten to see us on the bigger version. Right. We obviously hope that we can make those arrangements for everybody because there's nothing more, there's nothing more fun for me than to play the big cage. And I think uh, that, that, that is, uh, I think you guys can see that when we're, when we're playing the big cage too, is I have, more fun playing it than you guys are going to have watch watching me. <laughs> yeah. But I hope you are I hope you are enjoying watching me, but <laughs> it breaks my heart that I can't take the big cage everywhere. Yeah. But just carry it, it, it will come it will come in time. I hope that people, you know, if if you want to see it, you need to you need to keep on spreading the word about Killikoi because the higher up the bill we go, the more we can bring that cage to you guys. Yeah, it's quite so, a spectacle to be sure. Yeah, well, I yeah, yeah. It, it's definitely fun, and I appreciate you, you all trigger, the good comments. You trigger all the like Taylor Swift samples and uh, all the, all the Taylor Swift samples. Yeah, um, <laughs> we have we. He the, triggers the song off the MP3, and the band just plays unplugged. And that's the thing too. Like, uh, we can going back to DIY, DIY. We can make everything. We can make any noise we want to. Oh, any yeah. noise in the any Bass noise drops, you can all imagine. Kinds of fun stuff. Yeah, and we could put that anywhere. Yeah. We could put that anywhere on the cage in any mm -hmm. part of the set. So at any part of the set, I could start you know triggering orgasms. Do you have like a? <laughs> that's what you should be doing. Yeah, Do you right? have like a, a computer, or a brain, or something somewhere yes. nearby that you can? I, uh, there's a there's a brain that's actually connected to the cage. It's all part of the setup. Is that like one of the Roland SPDs or whatever? It's not Roland. But similar. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Gotcha. And it all runs, it all runs MIDI. Nice. And so you uh, just have it snaked out to all these different. Uh, I have it all drums. snaked out. We have. I. Ha I have. 
I have a MIDI that I run for the keyboard. I have a MIDI that I run for the cage. Yeah, I forgot that keyboard's in there, too. Yep. Yeah. And then I have, of course, I also sing harmonies, which is, you know, that's that's whatever. here. That's not really the, the shining moment of the cage, but it's fun that <laughs> yeah. I get to sing. Um, but, yeah, it's uh, it's it's all being run through the brain into our computer. Everything is run. Our, our entire show is run through our computer. Um. You must have a pretty powerful computer. We have a pretty powerful computer, and the dangers of such a thing is that we have oh, performed yeah. and they've crashed yep. during our rehearsals. They haven't crashed live, and we can't. Sometimes we just can't figure out why, and we're running the risk, like like the suspension thing, like like, like hanging up or the stunts that we might yeah. try. Like we 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 got to run it live. And we got to hope with, it doesn't with crash. Clicks and tracks and all that stuff. To me, is that that's what you guys are doing? Well, we do have a click. The, right. the whole point Keep of the cage is together. to not have tracks. Right, so you can do all the tracks live, yeah. essentially. But playing to a click, and, and, uh, and if you do tracks or any sort of lighting cues and all that stuff that are automatic, automated and programmed, that to me always feels like what I imagine walking a tightrope would feel like. Like, at any moment, this could all go real bad. Like, yeah, that's a, it's that, a miracle that it doesn't most of the time. But I don't like performing with that feeling, which is yeah. one of the reasons why we had meetings a while back and decided to ditch all that stuff, and we just do the raw organic rock thing right now for sure nothing and i don't and have to worry about we were in alabama setting yeah, up and, yeah. and 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 all of the shows up to that point have been no problems and then all of a sudden a problem is happening that has i've never encountered before and i cannot explain and i do not know how to fix yeah and i'm sitting here like and and then all of a sudden it fixed and it was nothing that like we didn't really do anything but we Just still decided yeah but we still decided to um to go without them yeah, I don't. I don't remember. I guess. I guess. Wasn't it at uh, the Juke Joint? No, that was at Sidetracks in Alabama. Sidetracks. Yeah. Um, I bet. Yeah, yeah. Sidetracks. Yeah. That's but, uh. What's that's uh. Where they shoot the rockets from? Uh. Huntsville. Huntsville. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know them, Dirty Roses? Is that a band? Yeah, they're from down that, like basically Huntsville. Really good, like kind of new rock band. Um, Not sure. Countryish. Could, couldn't tell you for sure. We know like um, a lot of the new like rock bands coming out it's super out of fun. alabama just out of everywhere <laughs> like, we've met amazing people in spain germany uk and then of course in our area and stuff and you guys i imagine are probably the same but you guys are a little heavier than us you skew probably a little more metal would well, you call yourselves metal i don't i i don't know just man it's hard, hard it's hard or? to categorize people people ask all the time like you know what you know that you know what it's like when someone i mean you guys are definitely kind of more in your groove with the, yeah, your it's genre. It's easy for me. People like, yeah. what do you sound like? I'm like, rock. Yeah, like, yeah, exactly. Do you like Guns N' Roses, ACDC? Exactly. Like, 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 <laughs> for me, however, I'm just kind of like, you know, I can name bands that you're probably not going to recognize. Right. And if I name a band you do, I honestly don't believe that that's a, co a comparable band. Right. So. Right. Like Shine Down. Right. Right. So but I tell not, them. But you're right. It's not like you're, you're right. not Shine Down. Right. Like so like, I tell them that device in your pocket. If you go to that search bar and you type in K I L L A K O I, <laughs> you follow us on any of those. You'll know what we sound. And you'll like. know what we sound yeah, like. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. You've so you've said this speech before. Well, not on camera. That is pretty funny though <laughs> that people are like. Well, how do I find you? It's like, how did you find the recipe yeah, for no chicken kidding. you made last no night? Kidding. Like, how do I find? Look you? us up. We're everywhere. Like, like go, <laughs> you, you go to your local Walmart. You buy my CD. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I actually had a friend give me a CD, and um, and then he was kind of a douche to me, and I left that CD in Walmart. <laughs> You know, talking about CDs you're finding. That well, friend found... was Ethan. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Was it really? Did no, that not at all. Not at all. I found a Marilyn Manson CD on a trash can one time at a gas station. That's hilarious. Still oh, in, still I, was in, I was in Walmart the other day, shopping for groceries, walking out. And you know how they have like the stacks of um, just stuff in the aisles. It'd be yes. like a pallet of like, I don't know, tampons or whatever. Yeah, and usually. On top of this pallet of tampons, for example, is Boston's first CD just sitting there. <laughs> and I'm looking at it and I'm like... There's an absolute masterpiece of a record that I'm sure Tom Schultz did not imagine would just be <laughs> sitting in a Walmart discarded like no one cares. <laughs> like, you know? On top of a box of tampons. It wasn't tampons, but it was, you know. Feminine stuff. products or something. No, it was just some random. I don't know. Yeah. No, no, nothing. It was just <laughs> probably Hostess? tortilla chips or something. I don't know. Some Twinkies or something. Yeah, not even yeah. anything cool. But I was just, and it wasn't with the CDs. It wasn't in the bargain bin. It was just sitting there left alone, the only CD. And I was just, I just walked by and I just, that thought just occurred to me like, that's so ridiculous that like, do you ever think that 60 years later or whenever they recorded that, that, um, yeah, that's just so crazy. So here's a cool segment. 
All right, every, everyone who has one of our CDs, if you have it in a weird place or a funky place after you've bought one from the merch store, obviously you listen to it, but if you've left it anywhere weird in your house or it's currently sitting in a funny spot, how about you message us and let us know where your send CD us a is picture, yeah. currently <laughs> sitting and send us a picture. There was another, um, I forgot, someone else go. Checking out. <laughs> Boston's, I like Boston. They're a good band. They are a good band. Boston's a good band. So I heard you say something about uh, some Iron Maiden uh, earlier. Yeah. What about them? I don't what, know. What, kind of, you, you what kind of will tell you every what show kind of trivia do we need to get into? <laughs> I'm not. I'm not going to get into trivia. I just him and Seth, both the biggest Iron Maiden fans I know, would just have contests constantly of like trying to out Maiden each other. <laughs> I'm pretty sure there's a million other people, couples just like that too. And what's funny about it is that I appreciate I, I, you calling you and Seth a couple. Thank yeah, you. Nice. <laughs> I I still I still feel and I I know this sounds stupid and it is stupid for me to say it. But I still feel like I'm the biggest Maiden fan in the world. I know that's not fucking you true. Know, you know what's great, though? Is they make you feel that way. Exactly. That's, and, and they make every other one of their fans the feel that way. of them feel that way. Like, I know. So they it's have the legion crazy. of the toughest, know, craziest fans. It's awesome. I know. They, they, they definitely caught the spirit of so many so How many How do you people. think they did that? Why do you, why do you like Maiden? Integrity. Okay. What does that mean? Uh, would you say Steve integrity, has integrity? Integrity. Yeah. Okay. So integrity means... How, do you, how would you define it? They, for a band. I think that I think that as a fan of Iron Maiden, you find their essence that that captured you. Right. And, they're always true to themselves. Right. And, and throughout their career, throughout their albums, you'll always have what cap what captivated you about them is all throughout all their career. That's interesting. And yeah. you know, it's it's not just their music. The music is you know the music is always going to be number one. But Iron Maiden, Iron Maiden, whether or not you listen to them, has become a fashion statement. The art, the story, yep, the designs, yep, Eddie. Yep. And, and yep. you know, I, I, Kelly asked me one time, she's like, she asked me about it, like, so what is it about that band that did it for you? And I was like, well, a lot of people like Captain America, Thor. I like Eddie. Right. Eddie's yeah. my superhero. Yeah. Like, like, he does everything, goes to all the worlds. You know, he, he's yeah. got every she superpower. Got more of it. Well, they have that, a mobile app that's like a game. I don't you know, know I it's it's it, it's like it's it's the it's what they've been touring on for the last five years is the under the name of that game. But um, you know, it's hard for bands to have successful games. What was but the Iron Maidens? Album Iron again? Maidens had games since the '90s. Oh, that's true. Yeah. What was the newest album again? The one they just released is called yeah. Sinjutsu. That's it's, right. Uh, that's right. You know, I mean, we could talk about that album. I mean, we could talk about Iron Maiden if that's something you guys okay, want. But for me, it's a matter of life and death. <laughs> me too. That album is me too. so good. It's always it's, and, it's and been it's, like that for me and too. And it's like all the things you like about Maiden, and but for me, production is such a huge part of it. And the production on that album blows out all their other albums, right. in my opinion. Right. And it's it's just everything you like about Maiden, but produced perfectly. Yeah, and, and I think which is, I, I for believe example it. why I'm not the biggest Pantera fan. Their music's incredible. Their riffs are amazing. Dimebag's incredible, but the production I'm I, I cannot listen to it for extended periods of time. I will second I, that. Yeah, I think that that matter of life and death is unmastered. Unmastered. Yep. Totally. Yep. Interesting. Well, they mixed it hot then because it sounds good. It sounds good. <laughs> Those <laughs> drums are huge. Good. That bass is glued. You know, that's the one thing that are huge. I don't know if it's always like a. I don't for know, the greater good of God, dude. I don't know if it's like an Iron Maiden thing or if it's like a drummer thing, but Nico usually gets praises for his drum quality almost every album. That's interesting. And even on this latest doubt, album, he gets a I lot of praise. I honestly don't know how much he would have to do with that. You know? Because if you think if you go. Well, and, he's been working with Kevin Shirley for the last 20 years. Has he done all the albums, Shirley? For the last 20 years. For the last twenty, so not the like early, early stuff. Well, I guess no, they've been. That's about halfway. Like 40. Yeah, yeah, it's about like, halfway yeah, through. Like, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well that makes sense. But yeah, so yeah, that's interesting because I don't know how much it it would vary widely drummer to drummer, I suppose. But some drummers would go in and play and leave and, and not have anything to do with the sound, you know. Yeah, well, Nico always seems like he's really into yeah. his drums and his drum and sound. Portnoy's the same way. They yeah. say like, I want it to sound like this. I don't like this. Change this. That kind of thing. Right. Which for Portnoy, maybe let the producer do it. But <laughs> <laughs> what's that one album where it's like the snare is like gung 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 every time he hits it, and once you hear that pitch, it ruins the entire album for you. You can't unhear anything. It's oh, the yeah. album with it's with a, As uh, I Am on it, right? No, that one's pretty good. That's um, Train oh, really? of Thought. It's it's, it's like the, it's the one that like Awake was on or something like that. One of the or no, you know what? Six Degrees of Inner Turbulence. Yeah, that's what it was. But that the songwriting on that album. No, like, there's some good ones where like, you can kind of get. But there's a couple songs where the snare yeah. is just like this pitch. I, I've never been I've never been a huge fan of the drum sounds on. Except for yes, except for Black Clouds. That album, the drums sound incredible. Uh, which yeah, is the one with except some, except for the except for the double bass uh, the double kick. And you know why? 
Because they didn't quantize it? He won't let them edit it. <laughs> <laughs> he won't let them edit their drums. And it's so funny because like even Portnoy needs a little editing. Yeah. Because you can hear it's like... They're a little sloppy. Like, <laughs> like and that's because but it's like, and that's because we're used to hearing a hundred percent quantized. So you could argue yeah. that he's right. You want that human error, that element in there that makes it real. But we're used to hearing Whitechapel and these other bands where it's just one hundred percent perfect, could have been programmed, you know? And and then you hear the real thing and you're like, Well, that's not as perfect as this other thing. He must not be that good. It's like, no, no, he's probably way better. Like it's just, you know, he's not He's, and, and what that does for me, though, is I hear these little discrepancies, and I'm like, oh, so all the other stuff that's ridiculous is also untouched. <laughs> like, yeah. He's just nailing it, you know? But so, then you hear these little flutters that are like, eh, I don't know about that, man. So we, talk, we, talk, we we've talked a little bit about Iron Maiden. Really haven't gone into depth. I was like, you know, when I was in high school in the garage, sweating my ass off in the summer, playing my Maiden tunes with my buddies, you know? But... Uh, <laughs> They, I found a band called Angra because of that. I know Angra. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and you listen to their cover of Not Number of the Beast or something? It wasn't a cover. They just popped up on Pandora one day back when everyone uh, listened to Pandora and I was in like doing graphic design in high school or some mm-hmm. shit. And uh, I, was I like, love Pandora. F- yeah. I was like, who the fuck is this? Yeah. And I like, I you showed me them before. Yeah, I have. Yeah. yeah. Dude, Temple of Shadows. Fuck yeah. You definitely dude. showed me that. I don't remember it, but you definitely showed me <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah. 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 And we also loved, uh, we fell in love with the Winery Dogs together. And Symphony X. Symphony X, dude. Yeah. And we saw, uh, yeah. we saw Winery Dogs at Amos's we did. together. The old Amos's. Which we play at all the time now, which is right, funny. Right, same. Yeah, it's so crazy. And I <laughs> yeah. can't remember, for the life of me, every time I'm in there, I try to remember what it was like when we were there, and I cannot remember it. Well, the, the setup? How it was different and how it was bigger, I do not yeah, remember. Yeah, it's, it's, hard, it's hard to imagine it when you're looking at the new, the new setup yeah, I, of I, it. I just can't do it. I have no idea. Because at that time, Basically, we were there, it's, it's, missing one, it's missing a wall. Yeah. Or, or it's, it's gained a wall. If you took a wall out, it would it probably you'd re- be reminded pretty quickly. I don't even know, man, because like the only time I was there was that time right. once. And that poster for that show we were at is still up hanging in there. I don't know if you've seen it. It's the Winery Dogs from 2014. Yes, or I have. It, it is still in there. That yep. same year, we went to Harrah's. And saw Alice in Chains. Yes, we did. And you remember <laughs> so, that we? You remember we did the fanboy thing where we went by every hotel every in hotel, the city, trying to find them, yeah. walking through every floor, listening through every door, <laughs> hoping to hear some conversation that we might think Jerry Kinchell is How having dumb with. We were, dude. They're probably on their bus. Like they were out of the just, city, dude. Just left. They yeah, were gone. Just gone, man. That just oh, shows so how funny. that just shows that. our youth. Oh, that's so our sad. naivety. I, I remember playing old Amos's. I used to play old Amos's a good bit. Like I'd only ever been. Well, see, we were from Columbia, so that wasn't like a hometown venue for us. Yeah. So like we had to make a trek to go see Winery Dogs at Amos's because that was the closest. Yeah, gotcha. it was worth it. And this was them touring the first album, and that was when Richie played um, "Do Him What the Devil Says to Do" by himself Keep that night, which is the first time I heard that song. Yeah, yeah. It's such and a that's what made song. me like that song. Was just I like that song. He, he has a solo moment every show, and he changes it up from show to show and that's the one he played that night and I just I like the song but I didn't know it so seeing him do it I was like oh it's the same thing with the Prince tribute that we saw which we should talk about that show but um, let's back up we played a with our tribute band Grind Alice in Chains we played a tribute festival it's to date the biggest show I've played and you as well it was a it was a big show yeah for okay. sure but the biggest <laughs> I, I don't I honestly don't think I can say that it might be really it's up there yeah it's definitely up there it was Oak Mountain Amphitheater and that was I in think Huntsville, it was, Alabama. It may have been one of the biggest, um, one of the biggest gigs that Grind ever played. Could have been yeah. eleven thousand people. Yeah. And uh, but but it wasn't just Grind. It was a it was a tour festival. The headliner was was Kiss, a Kiss tribute. Which is funny because that was not the biggest not, crowd attendance. No, no, not the best one. But the Prince tribute was amazing. The Prince tribute was incredible, and it made me like Prince because I knew Prince before, and I liked some of his stuff, but I wasn't super into it. But I watched the Prince tribute. And the way that they, the way that Prince's songs come to life on the stage is very different than how they are on the album. And it's a lot more rock. And that really spoke to me. And that's where I was like, okay, I like Prince a lot. And it was, I remember specifically his Raspberry Beret. I saw that song come to life on stage. I remember and I was you like, singing that song a lot after that. This after is an incredible gig. song. Yeah. yeah. We perform it to this day. Every gig oh, nice. pretty much. Uh, nice. Not original gigs, but when we do cover gigs. Yeah. We do, I do three Prince songs, actually. We do Kiss, uh, Raspberry Beret, and Purple Rain. And we do them as a, as a little trifecta. 
Right on. And um, it's always a fun time. Those guys make you feel starstruck at all? What? The tribute guys. Yeah. Isn't that kind of weird if a tribute... And they're doing, they're doing their job if the tribute artist is yeah. making you feel starstruck? Yeah. The U2 guys. I remember talking to them a little Dude, bit Dude, I that. love it when tribute guys have a chip on their shoulder and they treat you like shit, like they're the best it's thing. so <laughs> funny, dude. It's like you can't even legally sell merch. Well, they're, well, they're still in tribute. I mean, they're still tr in tribute. That's what they're doing, right? Right. They're still oh, that's true. tribute. They're just very, very accurate. They're in character. And then like they get back on the bus and they're like, and scene. All right, and let's scene. Go apologize let's go be to nice. All let's go be nice to everybody. We need to sell some merch. Yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. We can't. Never mind. Okay. Fuck. All Let's right, everybody home. come out on the bus. Yeah. Let's go 10 blocks away and we can sell merch. Yeah. <laughs> Who else was there? Rage Against the Machine was there. Chili Peppers. Chili Peppers. The Red Knot Chili Ozzie, Peppers. Ozzy, which I think I've seen a I thousand Ozzy tributes. They played right Ozzie. after us. I don't remember that. They were after us. Maybe they, I do. They had, I think they had a Pearl Jam one, maybe. I remember Rage and Red Hot Chili Peppers were both awesome. Yeah, they were cool. They um, were cool. I think they didn't have a barricade until after we were played. So we went on, and then they put a barricade up. Do you remember I had to sing the high part for Man in the Box, that show? Yeah, I mean, I still watch the video sometimes. Oh, true. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, oh, y'all got that. a video of that. We did it Man in the Box, and sometimes, last minute, we'd have to flip parts, and I'd sing the, yeah, and he'd sing the, Not me. Or whatever. Yeah. I ain't singing shit. <laughs> I did the, doot, doot. No, you did the, doot, shut. Doot. I did do that. <laughs> the, shut. And I did, doot, doot. What's that? From again. Doot, doot. Oh, yeah. Well, I those were harmonics. No, that was that was I don't vocals. Remember that riff? Oh, that's so funny. Oh, that song kind of sucks, though, huh? Nah, I'm not a fan. Nah. If, if Jerry ever sees this, take me on tour. <laughs> <laughs> if Jerry ever sees this again, he's was smart. Not your strongest he knows. Work. <laughs> he knows this is gonna be out there forever. We're just like, yeah, we no, But I'm not saying anything. I as I say this, I probably would cancel myself, but <laughs> in this moment, I would stand by that. I would say, you know, Jerry, you write a lot of good shit, but everything you write isn't gold. I'm sorry. Everything I write's I'm not sure, great, I'm too. I'm sure like, he'd probably say the same. <laughs> any human being alive is like, you know, I write good stuff, I write bad stuff, I've released good stuff, I've released bad stuff. Again, it's not my favorite. <laughs> as long as it's getting released and people are hearing it. Yeah. yeah that's that whole album, actually, is not my favorite. But um, their two previous ones are incredible. So, win some, you lose some. I think it's time. I think it's time for more some. beer. I think it's one. time for VIP. We're at an hour. I'm actually not a drinker, so this is like the first beer I've had in pr probably 20, 30 minutes. Twenty, thirty years. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. We went two different ways with that. All right. <laughs> Twenty or thirty years. Okay. Well, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna move over to the VIP. So the casual listeners, you got a hell of an episode today. Ethan Gibbons, everybody. That's a cute little bubble. Show that. Look at that. <laughs> Perfect. Make sure you don't edit that out. Yeah, no, not at all. We're going to cut this whole thing out. I don't think we're actually even going to release it, but um, one more time, Ethan, kill a koi. Amazing stuff. Look in this camera right here. Tell everyone where they can go see you guys live. Maybe don't say what you have going coming up because this is obviously evergreen, but two years from now, someone will watch it and be like, what? They're playing Amos? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, if people are interested in, the, in kill a koi, Pull out the phone. Pull out that device that's in your pocket. Um, get your girlfriend's device. Get your child's device. Go ahead and save it under all their devices. You can type in K I L L A K O I, all one word. When you do that, there's going to be a list of videos, a list of different streaming uh, platforms. If you go to any of them, we will be. Oh, is that Cubase? Look at that. It is Cubase, yeah. Check that out. Is That's not even Cubase 12, is it? That's not the newest one. No, that's probably 10. Yeah, 10.5. Damn, you guys are like two behind. Yeah, because I run Pro Tools like a professional. Because he runs Pro Tools. It's in the name. <laughs> <laughs> what, the tool? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> I got the tool part. Yeah. But yeah, so anybody who is interested in Kilikoi, obviously, um, as, as this day and age and everything, you can type in Kilikoi and whatever you are at. We, are, we, are, we actively release music. We're always, we're always trying to... Um, always trying. We're always doing always doing so feel free like to that. join in always doing all right and yeah. i got one i got of, really one of the important great, questions one of the on great, that one of the great charlotte bands too thank you yeah yeah for sure happy to be in the same city so um where can people go to buy merch where can people go to support donate uh because obviously gas is a bitch yeah well uh if you guys are interested in buying any merch uh we have a, a website kilacoy.com uh it's uh our, our um our store is shopify so anybody who's familiar with Shopify at all, you can type in Shopify Kilikoi. 
it's all there. And our merch is usually updated pretty pretty frequently, just as probably more often than we release music is we'll release yeah, more same. merch designs and stuff like that. So uh, if you're interested in anything like that, well, you should probably, before you buy the merch, go listen to the music, go watch the videos and decide if you actually want to wear something like that on your body. <laughs> Don't get a tattoo of it until you listen to the music. They order the shirt and then listen to the song and go, oh, this blows. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm going to return this shirt. Yeah, because I don't, I don't need to deal with that. One more funny story, though, about merch. Uh, our drummer's mom was at a Goodwill shopping. <laughs> what do you think she found? An Osara shirt? An LA Maybe shirt. Oh, nice. <laughs> and you guys are still in existence. That sucks. So funny, man. <laughs> I love that. Hopefully it was just the wrong size. But I love the idea that someone was like, I hate this band. And they like had to go no, to it was Goodwill. Probably, it was probably like a really Christian family and they were looking at their son's shirts. It was the, the Peace of Mind shirt. Yeah, oh, maybe. It, said, well, it, it says I found it, myself at the river. see it at the bottom and they're like, well, let me look that up. Right. And uh, all, before you know it, like a, a JB, Jack Black, you know, beginning of Kickapoo, fucking Pick a Destiny scene happens and right. the shirt's in Goodwill, you know. Right. Um, I listened to Beasel Bob on the way up here. Nice. Beasel Bob. Very good. Hell yeah. Okay. Driz, how about we fade to black and say goodbye to all of our lovely listeners, and instead we move on to VIP time with the Vipers. VIP time. So what we're going to do, I think we're just going to tell some tour stories. How about that? Yeah, let's do it. So we're, we we're can, letting so the, the VIPers well, we'll, are knowing we'll this right now. Yeah. We're saying this so that you guys can uh, get a little jealous. Yeah. And so say, head on over hey, to maybe. lamaybe.com slash VIP and get in on these tour stories and get a little more of this forehead gleam. Gleam. It's Sorry. Like, all right. still yeah. hasn't gotten to 69 degrees in here. Let's yeah. do this. All right, let's do it. We're four degrees away. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for watching the latest episode of your new favorite band. This is the end of the free content. But if you want to unlock the full uncut versions of every episode, head over to lamaybe.com slash VIP and sign up for our membership. For $7 a month, you'll get extended episodes of our podcast, a bonus episode every month, plus exclusive merch. You'll also be supporting us and helping us continue to stay on the road and make new music. And for that, we're eternally grateful. So thank you.